yep 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 it's that time again y'all are in the divine council um you've been listening to uh yours and mine with the architect and mrs architect now you're in with the sex expert and we got a hot topic today um we're gonna talk about uh cheat proofing your marriage with sex and um we're gonna dive into that of course if you are listening by uh radio then you need to also like the page the divine council so that you can see video to um these messages and you can always go back and replay and try to get some of the stuff that you want to hear out of the message because you can pause it and then you can go back into it so you might want to do that and also you want to go ahead and click the uh, and like the uh culture shock entertainment page as well so you can get all the great content on there you can see the videos and the posts and all of that become a part of the community okay now you can reach us on all social media that is instagram and all of that stuff just look up culture shock entertainment uh for our youtube page you can look up culture shock entertainment tv and if you want to get downloads or to rehear a, a, a podcast you can always go to um the soundcloud and get the messages off of there as well okay so after me of course you know it's the chill session with a dj i'm just saying so you can practice a little bit but we're going to get kind of deep today of course of course of course of course I'm going to give you scripture. Of course, you know that I am Prophetess Tasha, but I'm also a psychotherapist. And um, this is geared toward marriage, but all are welcome to listen if you want to check it out. I know that we always think that we can cheat proof the marriage. So we're going to go right into that. And today, y'all, y'all going to hear some things. Because some of us going to tune in just to say, oh, I could cheat proof my marriage with sex. Well, let's see. Let's get into the talk, okay? Oh, last week we talked about exercise. We talked about all of that. So, I'm um, just going back over a few things. When, we, when I go back over those things, those things are, um, again, I said squats are good for ladies that are want that stamina for riding so if you want to be the one that's in control of the sex life or the one that is uh in control for that moment you may want to brush up on your squats a uh, fun way to do that is to do it why if you're not a workout person you may want to um get a uh, um during your commercial time so like if you were like me <laughs> and you watch the new edition show is two hours so in those two hours if you dvr it yes i did because i enjoyed it but um if you dvr it and you want to just go back over and look you got two hours so every time they go to a commercial do some squats and then when they come off a commercial Go back to sitting down, relaxing, and doing it. It will give you muscle control in your hamstrings, your inner thigh, your outer thigh, your gluteus, which uh, gluteus is um, your butt, and um, even the bottom half or your core. So you're going to work those core muscles to help you with mounting and riding so that you can get your stamina up. Now, one thing for the men, you want to brush up on your planks, your planks, your um, push-ups. You can also do uh, squats as well, kettlebell squats, where you take the kettlebell and you do squats. And you want to make sure that you get low because that will strengthen your core, strengthen your arms so that you can do that. You become that Superman lover, okay? Um, one thing I wanted to share with the women, cause we were talking about exercises. Um, if you want to, uh, you can go ahead and I'm seeing the people come in. Um, you can go for the vagina. There's exercises as well. So I'm going to show you something. 
so again if you're in radio land you may not can see it so i will describe it for you uh but you want to go ahead and like that divine council so you can see what i'm talking about so of course the vagina is a muscle vajayj whatever you want to call it it's a vagina that is the inner walls of your vagina it is a muscle you want to keep it tight and right because nobody likes it loosey and goosey i've had two big babies and i'm keeping it tight and right you want to also keep it keep the muscle active how do you do that with exercising it now one thing you do when you're sitting sit up straight use the sensation as if you're you have to use the bathroom you know how you try to hold it so you won't release your water you want to squeeze tight count to about 10 while you're squeezing it and then relax squeeze tight as tight as you can get it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten relax you can do this throughout your day if you're a person that sits that will build up the muscle in the vagina and it will also help with incontinence because sometimes us ladies as you get older because you've had children especially if you had c-section your muscle that same muscle exercises the vagina and the uh, bladder muscle so you want to keep that and you don't want to have continent incontinence when you get older so those will help just squeeze like you're trying to stop yourself from urination and then release count to about 10 you may not get to 10 you may get to three at first depending on who you are then you release and then you build your way up just like anything you have to build that muscle up another thing that we can use is this right here no these are not anal balls these are kegels kegel balls these are purple round balls and they're weighted so there's a little weight a free weight in here you're going to say this is the vagina you're going to insert it there now for some and you're going to squeeze around it make sure that it's always the string hanging out so that you won't suck it up but you can always pull it out okay so the first weight and you can go by your size you can get these out in, in um any novelty store or sex store that's what a novelty store is and then you want to bring the second one in there so you have two you squeeze around always just like a tampon have the string here so you want to pull it up suck it up and now you got to go to the hospital for them to get it out <laughs> or try to have your man fish it out so you put it in there you hold it some people walk around all day with this inside of um, their vagina and they're just using their muscles for this ladies it does um, strengthen the vaginal muscle which is the vaginal wall um, once you've learned using your kegel balls on how to maneuver those muscles you can get them and maneuver them it will help you um, in love making because you can squeeze him don't squeeze him too hard because you can't get him real nice and tight but when he's getting ready to bust you can just squeeze on your vagina a little bit and it will give him a different sensation and knowing how to mass using your um, vagina walls to massage him a little bit more, so you're squeezing a little bit and you're moving them up and down. He don't know what he, where, what what what's that? So Kegel exercise is really good, especially um, for us that had kids vaginally. Okay, because we want to get our muscles back tight because we don't want to be loosey gooseys. So you can put both of them in there. Make sure you have the string out of the vagina so it won't suck it up in there. And you have to try to fish that out or go to the doctor and get it fished out. Trust me. Um, I've worked at the um, ER, so I know that people get a lot of things stuck up there. 
you like really what would you doing with that in there <laughs> hi how you doing welcome to the sex expert show um so kegel balls this is what this is kegel balls they keep us from being loosey-goosey it keeps us tight and right it is a weighted ball it's a weight inside of here that's free rolling so you stick it in the vagina let me get my vagina right mm -hmm. you stick it up in there and you can put both of them in there or one in there depending on how how you work how, how this works for you okay so kegel balls very important for vaginal health it also helps with incontinence in the as you get older you know sometimes you know the commercials you sneeze when you 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 sneeze and pee that will help with that okay so moving right and into our cheat proofing cheat proofing cheat proofing marriage with sex again y'all know i'm gonna keep it real with you and not only am i going to keep it real with you i'm gonna give you my professional opinion again that's just what i do so the first thing that i can let you know is that the number one thing let's set aside the myth and get straight to it you cannot stop somebody from doing what their desire is in their mind. Y'all see me point to my chest, but the heart is actually in the mind. So your part of your mind is your heart. And your desires lay there. So I can give you, I can teach you all kinds of sex positions. I can teach you how to do anything and everything that you would think that okay i'm turning my man out but if he has de his desire in his mind is to be with someone else that's just what's going to happen i can teach you how to get your muscles strong how to massage the penis and how to just really have great sex but if that joker wanna experience somebody else that's just going to happen it has more to do with him than it has to do with you and your sex life okay same thing because you know i like to keep it balanced you can lick her from head to toe you can i can teach you how to use your fingers to drive her crazy i can teach you different positions but if your woman, your wife wants to cheat and it's in her mind and her desires, then that's just what she's going to do. It has nothing to do with you. It has more to do with them and what they have going on with them. So take that pressure off of you. Now, of course, if you are, are married and y'all having these big, long breaks of sex, then you are opening doors to cheating okay now that's from the bible i can't I, I i i can't do anything with that that's in first corinthians um seven it says don't go long periods of time without having sex okay it says that matter of fact i'll read it to you i'll read it to you i'm coming out the easy to read version of the bible um, it's not the King James, so it may read a little bit different in King James, but it's, it's basically the same. In chapter 7, it tells you everything. It says, don't refuse to give. Okay, this is uh, 1 Corinthians uh, one, uh, 7, 7 and 5. I'm sorry, it's 7 and 5. It says, do not refuse to give your bodies to each other. So, men, you can't refuse it. I know you're working hard, but know where your woman limits are. If y'all ain't been together in a week, and she good with that, maybe two, I say two weeks. I say week for me, but uh, two weeks. And y'all ain't been together, and she ain't saying, like, giving you little hints, you need to check it. Because you, you, you shouldn't have these long periods of separation unless there's a medical reason, pregnancy, sickness, or whatever. 
And let me tell you something. Pregnancy and unless it's really, really sickness, there's other things that you can do. Don't tell me that you just can't give him your vagina or you can't give it. Because you got fingers, men. You can satisfy her. You got a tongue. You can satisfy her. If you having an issue with the penis. Now, extreme sickness. You, you, then you just take care of you. But certain other things. You don't have to not have a sex life. Because you can't. You got ED or something like that. If you got these 10 digits, you can say, come here, <laughs> get up, go in that vagina, use those fingers, get to that G spot. It's, it feels like a little raisin, feel like a raisin or a spongy. Get those fingers, use one, two, or how many, however else, go in there, do that come hither motion. You'll feel that uh, raisin-like feeling and, and it'll drive her crazy. She'll be like, oh my God. Yes, God. You don't have to not go without sex because you can't get it up. Women, you're pregnant. You may not want to have vaginal sex. You may not want to. Your hormones is not there. But you have your hands. Get to that. Get some lotion. Get some oil. Get some lubrication. And get that hand massage going. You don't want to leave room for the enemy. You know, you got a mouth. You got different things that you could do to make sure that your man is good. I may not want that, but I, you know what, babe, for you, I'll make sure you're good so that you won't leave the door open for the enemy. Because he's going to bring, he's going to bring that woman like you pregnant. But she not. <laughs> and she willing to give him everything. But if you make sure that your man is taken care of, even if you don't want to. Hey, I, I don't like fellatio. Okay. But you got a hand. Use some. Get creative. Again, I've already told some of y'all. Use fruit. Use vegetables. Take that um, cucumber. Slit it down the side. Slit that cucumber down the side. Uh, get the flesh out of there. Warm it up just a little bit. Don't put no hot cucumber on there. Take the cucumber. Take the cucumber. Slide it on your man's penis and go up and down. It's warm. It feels like the vagina. And you're going to, he's going to love it. He's going to love it. Everybody already know I talk about the uh, grapefruit blowjob that, you know, people are going on and looking and investing in that. Do something. Because as the book says, now this is the book, the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 7 and 5, it says, do not refuse to give your bodies to each other, but you might both agree to stay away from sex for a while so you can give your time to prayer. Then come back together again so that Satan won't have room. Well, so Satan will not be able to tempt you in your weakness. That's 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. It said don't refuse each other. Don't refuse each other. It's simple as that. That's a very important. Sex is very important to a marriage. That's when you guys are becoming one. You're becoming one again. So you can't refuse each other. Now, like I said, some people might be pregnant and you might just not want, you don't feel that. But just other things that you can do. And for men, you, you know, you may have erectile dysfunction or something. The stress of it all. And you may just be tired. Use your hands. Use other things to make sure that person is satisfied, okay? So, when I said that, I'm still going back to my first point. You cannot stop anybody from cheating if that is where their mind is. You can make provisions. You can make sure they're satisfied. Communication is a big thing. Baby, I need you right now. I need you. Hey, look, man. I've said it to my husband, um, sir, 
I know you're busy and I know that you work so hard for this family and you know you allowed me to be who I am and you allowed me to raise the kids and everything like that and you've been such a good husband but I was wondering when you gonna come see me about uh, hey <laughs> I, I need you now uh come on your lunch break we need to do something but if you don't communicate with each other how the other person is supposed to know the other one somebody said that your looks will keep your looks will keep your man from cheating your looks will not keep your man from cheating if you're a big girl like moi you can have a man that will not cheat and you can have a man that will cheat you can be smaller than me and have a man that will cheat and or have a man that will not cheat you could be a supermodel and have a man that will cheat or have a man that will not cheat you could be a fat daddy and that woman be faithful to you or you could be a skinny joe skinny daddy slim thick and she go find somebody else because it's not about you unless you the fat girl that be like oh, i'm so ugly nobody likes me oh my girl get yourself together i'm fat and cute girl cute whatever you think you are that's what you would exude to other people and that's how they will treat you my husband treat me like i treat me i think i'm cute and 15 years that man right there loving all this thickness why because i love it that does not mean that i'm mm -hmm. not in a gym trying to get the take care of myself because taking care of tasha making sure that i'm here for these grandbabies they ain't got here yet i'm trying to do that and you know it ain't no nothing wrong you can be a big girl and still go down in size no problem with that but if you thinking that because you're so cute that your man won't cheat on you then you have life messed up if you think you are so handsome that that man will not cheat on you you are i have some swamp land beautiful beach swamp land that i can sell you because it has nothing to do with your looks i have been in marriage counseling um counseling different couples and you know what when i see who they spouse cheated on them with i like boy do you have eyes why would you go there instead of staying with your wife your wife is beautiful and he picks somebody different from his wife uh i've seen women cheat down it's like girl you couldn't don't go down cheat up <laughs> But the truth is, he can be handsome, he can have a nice figure, and she gonna get the fat daddy because of the way he treats her. So your looks won't keep a man. It will not. It won't keep your spouse from cheating. It won't keep a woman. Holly Berry is the number one for that. And if you can hear my song in the back, I got Booty by um, Erica Badu. And I'ma just read you a few of her lyrics from this song. She said, your booty might be bigger, but I can still pull your ninja. I'm going to say that instead of what she said. She said, you got sugar on your pita. But uh, he think our minds are sweeter. It has nothing to do with you. And she told me something different than you. You can be educated, you can be this right here, and he go get the girl that's on um, public assistance and all of that. That's who he cheat with. I like, it's this thing right here. I'm going to uh, put it on pause for a minute. But I want to read you these lyrics. Your booty might be bigger, but I still can pull your ninja. But I don't want it. You got sugar on your pita. But your ninja thinks mine's sweeter, but I don't want them. 
you you know the whole encyclopedia, but your ninja think I'm deeper. But I don't wanna. I got a whole lot of junk off in you got a whole lot of junk off in your trunk, but your ninja think I'm live and I keep him crunk. I don't want him. Why don't she want him? She said, I don't want him because of what he's doing to you. And you don't need him because he ain't ready. Some of us have married people that are just not ready to be married. That's why he cheats. Because he ain't ready. He's still acting like a little boy. You married that girl. You married her, but she's not ready. All of this stuff, that's why you say, some people say, a good man is hard to find. No. Or they say, you know, uh, the good man always, he always get cheated on and get treated like a sucker. No, because that good man may have chose a girl that's just not ready for him. You choose these people are who's not ready. They're too immature. They're still thinking with their sex organs. And they're not ready. And some of us have slept with them and gotten digmatized and pussy whipped. I'm sorry, I'm using strong language. But it's more of the connection and you let things go because of his the way he putting it on you. You letting things go because of the way she put it on you. And you wondering why he cheating or she cheating because they not ready. They not ready for you. You are who they thought of for their future self. But not who what they are now. So they locked you down for when they grow up. But right now, you're going to have to go through the child phase and let it go. Because some of them are still children. I'm sorry, but they still are using their penis like they did when they were a little boy. They're still using their vagina as a, a, a monopoly uh, board. They're not ready. And she goes... Uh, Your kisses might be wetter, but your ninja likes mine better, but I don't want them. You got beans and rice and the hot corn cakes, but your ninja still over here on my plate, but I don't want him. She have all of this. She said, you know, you are the best version of yourself and you may not think that I'm good enough for him. But he over here with me. So your looks have nothing to do with it. Really, if you want to think about it, sometimes it's the way you treat people. Sometimes they're just not ready for you. You got a PhD, a magnum cum laude, but your ninja loved me with a GED. Girl, you done got all that learning. And he over there messing with the girl that even graduated from high school. And you going, why? What about, what, about, what about me? She's telling you he ain't ready. I don't want him. But, you know, you can keep him. Because I see what he's doing to you. That's why I'm not going to deal with him after you leave him. Uh, Let me see here. You the one with all the money. And he knows my money's funny. But I don't want him. You got a pad, you got a pad all decked out for show. But your ninja at my dough, though. But I don't want them. Well, you can do the butterfly, the tussie roll, but your nigga still strut straight sprung all the way. I stroll. I don't want them. You know the whole 120 degree. But you can't keep your guy off his knees. You can't keep him off his knees. If he haven't matured, or if she haven't matured, you're not going to stop them from cheating. I could teach you everything you want to know about sex. I mean, I can make it really good. But you're going to be good for that night. And if he want to go somewhere else, he will. Has nothing to do with your looks. She said, I can't keep him off my knee. Keep him off his knees. You got a 9 to 5 and a 6 to 10. But your ninja told me not to work again. But I don't want him. That's some strong words. 
but this is one of her songs and she's right she's making it real clear whoever wants to cheat will cheat uh cooking will keep your man from cheating what she say in this song she said you done made uh beans and rice and hot cakes but he's still over there in her plate you done made this stuff from scratch you got greens what she say greens beans potatoes tomatoes you got all of that you name it but he's still finding a way or she's still finding a way to go and cheat because it ain't about your cooking baby money will stop them from cheating no money will not stop them from cheating you can be a great provider sir you can pay all the bills in the house and just let her have her money to herself and go get her nails done you know and everything but if it's her desire to go and be with somebody else there's pretty much nothing you can do about it i'm sorry women like she said you can have a nine to five and a six to ten and he'll go tell that chick hey you ain't working no way you ain't got to work worry about it now that's some of the things that 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 we are bringing up here but i have another one say secrets will cause them to cheat secrets will cause them to cheat Some of the men and women out here that are married have some great secrets. Some of the, our men and women have been addicted to porn from five, four, and five years old. And that's their whole, their mind was shaped by it. So all they know in their life as a comfort zone is sex. So you get into a marriage, you ain't telling her how addicted to porn you are and how much sex is a part of your leisurely time. And when you get into that marriage and y'all have a, a argument about something, what you gonna do? You're gonna go back to what is your behavior. It's habitual. So you're gonna go find somebody to scratch that itch. When you've been a molested, when you've been sexually abused, that can lead to sex being a very controlling thing in your life. And so when your life gets out of control, you go back to your comfort zone, which is sex. And so you grab anybody to fulfill that need. And so when you do that, it has nothing to do with the wife. It has nothing to do with the husband. But this is what I know. I know this. I know sex. I know how to feel comforted. And so sometimes in your mind, you have your uh, sexual addiction and you have your wife. And sometimes for some men, and I'm going to be just with men, and men, I'm going to flip it. I promise you, I won't leave you out here by yourself. I'm going to talk about these women too, because I see both of y'all. So when the man um, have had these issues with uh porn he'll marry somebody that's totally opposite of what he have seen all his life on pornos because he don't want her but he still has a desire for that type of sex but in his mind he categorized this is my wife that is the whore and so though he loved his wife his addiction is to that type of a woman and so, though he tries so hard and never deal with the issue of it, then he find himself slipping back to what he knows. For the young lady that has been molested, she was taught that her body is her commodity. And so, she was so out of control and she could not control what happened to her, but it taught her this is what your body is for. And so though she may marry a man totally different than her abuser, she still had that underlying thought that this is what it is. And so when he doesn't treat her the way she wants him to, then she'll slip off. 
again, these are secrets that we never tell each other before we get married. And then it comes out in counseling. Oh, I was molested or I was addicted to porn or I was introduced to sex too early. I was, you know, I, it, it was just a bad thing. I was abused. I was raped. I was this and I was that. And it all comes out in counseling because we too afraid to say that to our spouse before we get married. Okay, so why did you cheat? I love him. I have people go, I, I love him with tears. And I love that person, but they were taught, they were taught that this is, this is what we do. This is my comfort zone. I know how to have sex. I know how to do this and I know how to do that. So secrets will lead to cheating. Sometimes you got to get those secrets out and be healed so that you can be healed with nothing whole, nothing missing and nothing broken. Um, know who you are in your marriage. Who are you? Don't allow things to happen. No, no, listen here. This is who I am. I have a high sex drive. I'm going to want it every day. I'm going to want it about three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Can you handle that? Okay, you can't handle that? What can we do? Okay, can, can we at least have sex every day? Every other day. Okay. Now this is my hard line. I can't go without. I can't go that third day. You're going to need to come and see me. We're going to have to do something. And see sometimes we're not as honest as that. This is what I need. But do it before you put this on. This is what I need. This is. this. I'm being honest. This is what I need. I love you. But I don't want to cheat on you. I don't want to break your heart. But the truth is, it could happen because I have a high sex drive. Know who? Know your truth. Well, I'm a person I don't like having sex much, or I have, you know, an issue that may can hinder me having sex with you. So find different ways to be intimate with each other. Find different ways to please each other. Come back together. Uh, know who, uh, again, know who you are in that marriage. Some people have sex addiction, addiction to porn. You just a big flirt because you have low self-esteem. So I need that woman. I need, you know, you my wife. So you going to think I'm okay, hopefully. But, you know, I'm a little heavier then I used to, you know, I ain't my football weight no more, my basketball weight. And when that girl comes and be like, hey, big daddy, it makes you feel, it builds up your self-esteem. So you're a big flirt because you need that. Because you were taught that that's who you are. You are your penis. Or that woman, you done had a few little babies. Or you done had one baby. Or you just like to eat. And when that man walk by and still look at you and be like, hey, girl, and you go, because <laughs> you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. And it feels good for somebody to, you know, pay attention to you. And that's where us as spouses, you know, are you affirming your spouse or are you adding to the problem? Baby, you don't, you the guy so wait, um, baby, you look heavy, baby. Or are you affirming them? Girl, you thick. Thicker than a snicker, but I love it. Men, you cultivate your woman. Meaning that you will build that woman. She, none of us will be the women that you have in your head. But you can make us the woman you have in your head by cultivating us. If your woman is a little bit thicker, both of y'all go to the gym together. You be her partner. You be her support system. Because what's happening, and I'm going to say this from personal experience, my husband was um, 300, I'm, I'm sorry, 300 and um, 
89 pounds now he's down to uh, i think under 250 now and i'm still heavier than him i'm still in the 300s my husband just started walking and the weight just started dropping off i've been on a steroid for over seven years and it's harder for me i have to go put the work in but what happens is is that he works a lot and when i go to the gym the men see me putting the work in and some of them like projects. Y'all think I don't know, but I know. They like projects. And so they like, oh, she putting it in. And you can still see my little frame and be like, oh, yeah, that's going to be all right once she get that off of her. <laughs> and so they come and they encourage me. And I, they, you know, like, baby, you got it. Come on. Come on, baby girl. You got it. And if I'm insecure, that would sound amazing to me. And I'd be like, hey, oh, he said, I get it. He said, you see it. But when you know who you are, you can say thank you. And when, when they come and give me tips, I take the tips without being overly flirty. Why? Because I know what I got at home. Hey, glory. That man that been there through all surgeries. He, <laughs> he was there when they cut my stomach open. He cleaned the wounds. He fed me. He, when I couldn't walk, he would get up and walk me and say, baby, you can do it. You think I'm leaving him? But no, I don't think so, baby. I got that on lock. <laughs> don't worry about it, boo. It ain't nothing that nobody get that Mr. McCory will ever will ever hold a candle to him. I remember when I thought I was dying, they told me I was dying. And my husband said, no ma'am, no ma'am. God is not going to take you away from me. He's not. I said, Kevin, they telling me every week that I'm, I'm, I may not make it back. He said, that's okay what they say. But I last answer to this. He willed me back. He would pray over me. That's sexy. So when it come down to it, I'd be like, hey, what you need? <laughs> if he called me right now say, I need to see you, I will shut this whole video down, baby. What you need, boo? What you need? Never going to let that go. So being a big flirt. They just need to, you know, work on their self-esteem, men, men and women. Sometimes you just don't feel, you know, then somebody come along and tell you, and it, it start off so small. It start off so small. And I have a, a actual scripture for that. Let me read you a few scriptures, and then we go. You said you talking about sex and you giving scripture? God gave us sex. What is y'all talking about? Let me tell you something. If you're a woman of God and you married, you're the biggest freak out here. If you're a man of God and you are married, you are one, you should be one of the biggest freaks out here. Because you ain't got nothing holding you back. You ain't got, if you trusting in God and you trusting in that man, you could be all type. Y'all ain't read the, I'm going to break it down. That's Book of Solomon. Y'all ain't really read that. He said, girl, I'm yearning for you. I'm yearning to play in your garden. What you think he talking about? He said, I come to you and I'm fully satisfied at your breast. They soft as white doves. He telling you what he doing. He said, I'm about to come and drink from your cup. What cup you talking about? Y'all better get into that Bible. It, I'm telling you, he, he got you. He got you under control, honey. You will figure out some things. That I'm supposed to be fully. I can't wait to come play in your garden. Well, come on, daddy. Tell you, you got to read the book. You got to read the book and know what it's talking about. Don't let somebody read the book to you. I'm trying to see what scripture I want to read here. It's uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 
um, 23 and 7. It said, don't ruin your health trying to get rich. If you are smart, you will give it up. In the uh, blink of an eye, money can disappear as it grows wings and flies away like a bird. Meaning, put your priorities together. Put your priorities. What is you, what, I mean, really, what, what's going on? Put your priorities together so you can understand that all this stuff we amass together, if we ain't loving on each other, communicating with each other, you know, wanting to be here, then nothing we do, no matter how much money, no matter how you're trying to do things, is not going to work. Somebody is going to stray because they're not getting what they need. And let me tell you this. You may not can use sex to keep your man, but whatever you, whatever he's lacking, he's going to find it in somebody else. Whatever she's lacking, she's going to find it in some, somebody else. If you don't affirm your wife or affirm your husband, meaning that you don't praise them for something or make sure they're comfortable and communicate with them in the right way, somebody's waiting in the wings to say, girl, you beautiful just like you are man you handsome just like you are some people start out not wanting to cheat but they just get so much support from the girl at the job they get so much support from the dude at the gym and you won't even go work out with her You'll call her all kinds of names. You'll tell her she round. You'll tell her she gained some weight. But you won't go to the gym and work out with her. And then that guy waiting at the gym. I'm telling y'all. My husband told me one time. He said, I'm coming to that gym to see what y'all are doing. I said, it's a group of us. He said, yeah. Yeah, but it's men in that group too. I, they need to know who your husband is. Come work out. Become a team. Because whatever is missing in the marriage, and another thing that we do as couples, okay, so on one hand, you have your wife who you love and your husband who you love, but you with them come the responsibilities of life. You know, y'all talk about the water bill, the light bill, the gas bill, the cardinal, little Jimmy knee braces, Susie need some more shoes, uh, you know, Quita that acted up in school, and all of the responsibility, you see that as that person. And then that woman at work or that man at the gym, they are fun is light y'all can laugh over little stupid stuff but when you come home first thing you met with is you know the sink broke or my car needs brakes or blah 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 and so your mind automatically say i'm having fun over here and i'm stressed out over here and so where you don't intend for this relationship to go any further than just being light and fun it does because now you have a connection with that person and once you have a connection then they automatically become a co attraction because that's just we're humans we say you know what i feel better over here you looking kind of cute look totally different than your wife they may not look better than your wife but the way you feel because it's not about the way they look it's the why how they make you feel and so when that happens, what happened? Wife stopped being girlfriend. She was the wife. She was the responsibility. He is the husband. He is the responsibility. That's why date nights is important. I ain't your wife. I'm your girl. I'm your girl. We not talking about the kids at this date. We're not talking about we're going to just laugh and joke and have a good time. we going to, before all this pressure, and I live in Chicago, so they say mayor daily pressure. But before all of this pressure and responsibility, you know, when we was, you know, candy girls, you know, and all of this.
I'm going to go back to being your girl. I'm, he going to go back to being me and my husband. We always do that because we know, honey, when you got a 20-year-old and 17-year-old, we can talk about them all day. You know what this Negro did? You know what she did? It's so, you know, but when you remember, I used to love him. I used to love her. Remember who she was before she was the responsibility, before all we talked about? Do not bring stress into your bedroom. We're not talking about bills in the bedroom. We're not talking about who got suspended. We're not talking about anything stressful in this bedroom. This bedroom is going to be our sanctuary. At the end of the day, me and my husband lay in that bed and we talk to each other and we laugh. And we fall asleep in each other's arms. It don't always have to be about sex. But that bedroom, no. I'm not paying bills for my bedroom. We gonna sit at this dining room table and talk about the bills. He don't talk about the bills no way. He just give me his check and say, hey, look. Save me some money. I say, okay. I got you, daddy. I don't, I don't abuse that responsibility. I try to save him money anytime he, I can, because Daddy always gonna reward me for that. Hey, I know what they say. That's so backwards. You know, women, we got to stick together. If you ain't sticking me, <laughs> I can't really stick together. So, so tough with you. I'm sorry. They say you, y'all got a traditional marriage. We do. And I like it. I like it. Why? Because he goes out and he works. When he comes home, the house is taken care of. When I got some money, I went grocery shopping yesterday. I said, no, baby. He said, baby, he pulling out his, his uh, wallet. I said, no, baby, mama got this. Mama got this. So when I want my crab legs, I did say I was working out, but I did work out. So I go get them crab legs. Yes, God. I don't have to worry. When I go on my day night, daddy got me. And I remember that he's my boyfriend. That's me and my boyfriend. So that's just, that's my suggestion. We coming down to an end because I got a lot of stuff. Um... I don't believe in having sex before marriage. And I know that uh, like half of y'all is going to get off of here because some of y'all single that's watching me. And okay, I get it. I understand it. Nature calls. You know, you get that six month itch. And if you me, you is like three weeks. <laughs> it's like, oh God, I love you. But uh, that's because I was undisciplined. If you show me an undisciplined man, an undisciplined man, I'll show you a cheater. If you show me an undisciplined woman, I'll show you a cheater. If you cannot tell yourself no in simple things, you cannot stay faithful. Some people say, that's a lie, Tasha. I don't think so. I've been doing this for a little while. And I see a lot of undisciplined people. If you can't say no to a cookie, how you going to say no to a hard dick? Some of us, you know, you, you have diabetes and you, you, it's a disobedient thing. You can't say no, your sugar 200, 300, and you still eating the pastas. If you can't say no to something that could eventually take your life, how are you going to say no to a wet vagina? Or somebody that got their mouth open like Daddy Philly. So it's a discipline thing. That's why I don't believe in sex before marriage. Now, did I follow my thoughts? No. <laughs> I got two kids before marriage. <laughs> But that was with a previous relationship. And when I decided that I need to really know you, dude, 
And it helped that my husband was in Chicago and I was in Cleveland. I'm going to tell y'all, it did, because I had to talk to this man on the phone. I had to say, okay, you know, you, I couldn't get to him. <laughs> so, that helped. But, you know, what happens is, is that you go ahead into this relationship and y'all started out with sex. And then what happens? You're hooked by the sex and y'all don't know each other. You don't know what makes him click. You don't know if he got sex addiction or not. You don't know. You don't know her. She could be all types of crazy. But you don't know because you've already hooked up with her. And that's a lot of the cheating. Is that you didn't know that you was the one he cheated with. He had somebody before you. When he met you, he was with somebody else. And you don't even know that because mm -hmm. y'all came together a little bit quick, okay? So my my little thing, I'm, I may finish this next week. So tune in next week and I'm going to finish it up because I do have a little bit more on this thing. But just remember for the person that you can be redeemed from cheating. Your marriage can survive it. Um, if both of y'all put the work in. Matter of fact, I know marriages that are thriving after, you know, infidelity. So you don't have to throw the baby out with the bath water. But if you're a person that keep you keeping your secrets, keeping you won't come clean, you won't do this, you won't, you know, be honest with you, you won't, you got secrets, you've been molested, you've been sexually abused and you know, this has just been a part of your life. It's time to change your nature. So we need to deal with you and your nature and you being healed. And then we can heal the marriage. Okay? Whether you man or woman, because it ain't men that just cheat. Because us women, yeah, Lord, we get hot. And, and that man look a little good to you. He blessed. And you be like, you know what, God, Satan won this round. And you give it up because it's what you used to. Some of us is insecurity. You just not secure about yourself. So anybody that come along to give you a little praise, you like, hey, you can have it. You can get it. Um, and some of us is just, you know, you're not happy in the relationship that you're in. And it's time to come clean about that as well. I could teach you sex. I could teach you how to do Anything you want to do sexually, I could teach you how to swing from the chandeliers. I could teach you how to fist. I could teach you anything that you want. But I can't teach you how to be faithful. I can teach you discipline that will lead to faithfulness. I could teach you how to deal with your issues. But if a person have it in their mind that this is what they're going to do, then that's what's going to happen. And it has nothing to do with you, wife. It has nothing to do with you, husband. It has to do with them and their mind and what they're going to do. Take that pressure off of you. Now, it does take two to break up a marriage. So you do have a, some type of responsibility there. He ain't all bad. Something went wrong there. Did y'all not communicate? Did you not, you know, it, you do have a portion, but you don't own the cheating. And thinking that anything, drugs, sex, money, cooking, will keep them from cheating, that's a fool's thought. The only thing that can keep them from cheating is a determined mind, communication, and trust in God. Now, once y'all are faithful to each other, now you can wear them out there, baby. Let me tell you, you can wear them out there. <laughs> Like, boy, you ain't known sex. Let me tell you. You don't even know how to do it. Let me teach you. Come here. Let me teach you. But we got to get you there first. Okay? So, that's the end of my show. Y'all can always message me. Y'all can always, uh, you can go on Divine Council. Give me a message. Um, you can inbox me at Latasha McCory. Let me tell you, I am strictly faithful. So I am getting inboxes that I don't appreciate. And let me tell you, you have no chance. <laughs> that man got me, baby. <laughs> 
um is cute uh it's not really cute because if you disrespect my marriage you're disrespecting me so i really don't appreciate that but i understand i understand all this cuteness all all this cute no i'm playing i'm playing um if you say anything that i feel i take offense to i will not answer you and i will block you i believe in the block party because again this right here means the world to me because that man is everything and i'm everything to me too <laughs> You disrespect him, or you disrespect me. And so, but anybody else that have serious questions, I'll try to answer you. I'll try to get more. Um, this year, I'm going to do more sexual things to show y'all how to do. So you will see if you have a problem seeing dildos or vibrators or any of that stuff, you may not want to tune in. But I will be sh showing you. Some stuff, okay? You'll be blessed. I love you. Father, I thank you for this evening. We thank you for listening in. God, we thank you for being just a wonderful God. We ask that you, God, we trust in you to cheat proof our marriage, God. We consult you. We put you in the middle of this marriage, God, that you may keep the wife and keep the husband, God. Um, I, I lift up the husbands to you now, God, that you may make him the man of his family, God, that you make him, uh, that you create in him, God, a clean heart and renew his spirit, God, that he may speak life to his wife, God, and his children, that he be the blessing that you caused them to be. Father, I ask that you touch the wife. Let her be the wife that you see her to be, the wife that you dreamed of for that man, God. In the name of Jesus, let her be a jewel to that house, a pleasure. Let her build that sanctuary for their family. In the name of Jesus, God, I also ask that you touch the family as a whole. If they have children, God, let them uh, uh, raise their children and be parents again. In Jesus' name, God, now I, I ask that you touch the sex life. Make it amazing, God. Let it blow their minds, God. In the name of Jesus, I ask for strong erections, Father, uh, and uh, great blood flow. God, strong backs in the name of Jesus. God, also let her be as wet as she can be, God, to satisfy that man. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen, and thank you, God. Y'all be blessed. I'll see y'all next week. Tune in.